This is one of those videos, I'm not going to say it's hard to make because that would just be cliche, but I will say that this is probably the most honest video I've ever made where I'm not even trying to act like my Arlie character. I'm just literally being Arliss Coleman in this video and I think it's good to, oh no, separate the two because Arliss is more of a goofy, which it is an extension of the real me. Um, to a certain extent. I can give you a little insight into my my personality, my true personality. Um, my brain moves all the time. I'm constantly writing. I'm always doing this, doing that. I gotta do this, I gotta do that. I, I don't like to sit still. That's why I work like 80 to 100 hour work weeks and I work the night shift and I work it, work it, work it. And it's gotten to a point to where I've been able to buy all the stuff that I want plus with the YouTube stuff and then I was able to build technology around my YouTube channel and things like that. So it it's kind of weird because I hope this video doesn't sound like I'm complaining because I have no room to complain. I, I, I essentially got everything I ever wanted since I was a kid. I didn't really need anything else if that makes sense. So that gives you a, a sense of where I stand that I'm never, I've never been like an extravagant person or wanted attention or things like that. Um, I just simply like making videos, which is like a misconception among my peers or anyone around me. They think I make videos to have an outcry or some type of attention. But honestly, it's unrealistic to film videos on YouTube and add, try to get attention because you don't know if people are going to listen to you. When I first started making videos, I was getting zero, zero, zeros. No one was watching. And the only time I get people to watch is my friends at school or something. <laughs> it was really bad. So that's just to give you an insight into, I guess, my personality before we even move on with the rest of this video. So yes, the title of this video is The Golden Rule to Humanity. <laughs> and um, I was reading this book called The Point of Omega. And in this book, it talks about you turning your hobby into kind of like a job or a career or turning it to where it can make money for you. And uh, it, it starts to take a toll on you. And this has something to do with Rhea, which is also the title of this video, which is a, a girl that I was talking to over a long distance in the UK, and we connected. Usually, um, I'm used to like online hookups and stuff like that. Like everyone, people try to pretend like they don't go on Tinder, Badu, and a lot, all, all these other dating apps. But I've done it before. I've done some online hookups, whatever. And then I've had some relationships out of those apps too. And I didn't meet her on, and I didn't, I don't remember, it's, I think uh, we met on, I think I just started, I, me I messaged her on Instagram because I saw that she was watching another YouTuber and at first it seemed like I was trying to get revenge, which I kind of was because this YouTuber said some stuff about me that kind of made me mad and I thought maybe like the girl and I ended up trying to uh, talk to her and his name's Reacted Up, that's his channel name. And then it, it spun out of control and we started to really like connect and I didn't even care about that anymore, that, that whole drama thing, that was dead out, I, I was gonna kill that, you know? And then I went back and uh, tried to accuse her of stuff and it just got out of hand and then it, I guess I kinda ended it or whatever, or it's not over. It, 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 it's apparently it's never over I don't think it's ever over so let me give you um, I guess a rundown story of what happened why Rhea is mad at me and why I'm talking about the golden rule so Rhea is mad at me because I made it seem like I was talking to other girls in her head I was talking to other girls and using her name 
as like underneath the surface like to pretend like I'm still talking to Rhea but really I'm talking to new girls now. That was not the case. The story that I was making was always about Rhea, right? So uh, let's just do a rundown of the Dahlia video. So the Dahlia video, da 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 da, da whatever. I said, I'm sorry, Dahlia, this and this, and that's because she's a YouTuber and she was like me when I was a smaller YouTuber and I dreamed of making money off this. I dreamed of getting views and getting uh, an audience and actually interacting with an audience and people told us it's not possible. People told me that too and I overcame that. Well, what happened was that I made a video saying I'm sorry, Dolly, because I was essentially leaving her behind to continue doing this YouTube stuff and I can't really help her that much. And that was what that video was about. And when I said, hey, I'm, um, when I said, I, I think I named the title of the video like, going to the lake with Rhea. The reason why I named it that, going to the lake with Rhea, because it's not actually Rhea in the video, it's Dahlia. I named it that because essentially like, Dahlia was like a parallel to Rhea. That I was making the same mistake by leaving like by leaving Dolly behind, making the same mistake with Rhea. Lied, or has it hurt any other any any anybody else's feelings? I just stuttered like a motherfucker. But I don't know anybody that hasn't done that, and it it makes me really angry, and it makes me really very sad actually that we're all looking for that perfect person. We're all looking for that friend or relationship partner or or parent or or anything to be to be perfect and we're not perfect ourselves nobody's perfect and it, it really hurts because when you try to find a person I'm sorry <laughs> you try to find a perfect person you can't find them and whenever you do you fuck it up and it's not like that happens you know mm. I was planning to leave Rhea behind just because I felt like I had to focus on this video and YouTube stuff. And I had to expose myself because it's kind of hypocritical. I said I didn't start YouTube for fame and money and this and this and that. But as you start gaining an audience, even if you started out as doing it for fun, you start to see the potential and then you're like, oh crap, I got to do this and that. And soon you start to forget. And it became this thing where I started using Rhea's name for views and clicks and trying to hook my subscribers or whatever. And it, it worked for some time. I mean, people were still watching, people were coming, and people were emailing me about, dude, are you still talking to Rhea? Uh, and, you know, stuff like, that, and stuff like that because people really wanted to know. So that, I'm going to debunk Dahlia right now. D Dahlia and I have never had no romantic type of thing ever she is my friend okay she is my friend I'm debunking her right now so the second video Melanie Melanie so Melanie was this girl I, I'm not gonna go too far into it her, it doesn't even matter that much I made a mini vlog of her facetiming me and I said the name of the title was like new love and adventure bury my past and stuff like that and basically what I'm saying in that is that I'm burying my past as in like I want to leave all the bad shit that happened to me back then I'm trying to focus on things that matter and and also new adventure and new love I was talking to Melanie about Rhea on FaceTime actually Melanie got so tired of me talking about Rhea all the time <laughs> that she cut me off because I was constantly talking about it. I was constantly like, oh my gosh, this and this. I hope that, I would say, oh my God, I hope this story holds out. I hope she doesn't think I'm like cheating or trying to like talk to other girls. Me and her were like not together together anyways, me and Rhea. But like the thing is, we were talking and me and her had like this agreement that, hey, you want to talk to me? <laughs> Don't talk to other girls. And, you know, it was just like a respect thing, a mutual respect thing. And she wasn't really talking to other guys as for my, you know, from my perspective, I don't, 
I mean, I don't think she's like that. I believe she's not like that. I was just saying for we had a mutual respect thing, okay? Anyways, that whole situation with you know that that you know I I, I my heart just like dropped when I got a message on Instagram from Rhea because um, we blocked each other on the number in Snapchat at one point I guess and she sent me the a picture the thumbnail of Melanie in that th in that video and she goes oh you must be talking to her now you must have a new girlfriend I'm not even part of fucking story no more and she was like don't treat me like a subscriber I'm not treating her like a subscriber she's not no fucking subscriber I, like I know like I talked to her outside of YouTube like that has nothing to do with anything. She just supports the YouTube thing. She supports what I do. And um, that's the thing, like, and she, she supports, like, I told her when I first started talking to Rhea, I was broke. I didn't, like, th things were different, okay? I didn't have the equipment that I have. YouTube, you know, the money helped me buy the technology I needed, along with working a night job that I was working in. You know, she just said, you shouldn't work so hard. Because I was working like 80 to 9. I'm telling you, I was working my ass off. I was just like, if I just work hard and get get this money, I can do this, okay? And that's what I did, and I got it. So she was like, don't let them take away any rights. And then she, we were planning to come visit each other, or I visit her. Um, but I had to renew my passport. That's a whole bunch of other shit. She lives in the UK. I live in the United States. And... I know some UK YouTubers, I know some, and I know some YouTubers in other places, and like, it's like this divide, <laughs> you know, because then these YouTubers are like, oh, you should come here, you know, and then these people should be like, oh, this and this, and then I have like, sorry to say, I have some people who are not okay with me dating white girls for some reason, and I want to be open about that too, that could you know, that messed with my head a little bit. And I feel like Rhea wasn't trusting me too. And I feel like it's just a bunch of other little things that I feel like should be sorted out. Because these shouldn't even be problems. And I got so caught up in getting views that I used other girls and thumbnails and things like that to keep the viewers in mystery. But I didn't know it was hurting Rhea because she thought that maybe I was talking to other girls. Like, Listen, I would never choose anybody else over you, okay? <laughs> That's not going to happen, okay? This, I feel like that, that is a, that's incredibly childish, and I, I don't want you to think that. I think, um, yeah, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't do that shit. That's just so fucking disgusting. Huh? It's, 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 um, so the golden rule, the golden rule that everyone wants to talk about, the golden rule, so the golden rule is, is like respecting people at the most basic human level, and I feel like sometimes I didn't do that with Rhea, like I would always accuse her of stuff. And she would, you know, argue with me and be like, hey, I saw you, you know, saw you coming on this or, or doing this and that. And, you know, I'd be caught red-handed because I was, but I wasn't essentially just flirting, but I would comment on other pictures and stuff. Like, she would, it was just stuff that I was doing that was just messed up, that made her probably distrust me, like, this dude, whatever. You know, like, he's not doing what he's supposed to do. And I'm not one of those people. I'm not like, hey, <laughs> you know, I'm not a bad person. And I feel like I have. I've lost the golden rule sometimes. Like, you have to take the high road, okay? Take the high road and, and remember that you have to respect people at the most basic human level, whether that's someone you're in a relationship with, whether that's with parents or family you don't like it's like people you don't like in general just overall you have to just be mature and take the high road and just not get so caught up in everything 
and with the Rhea notes, I, I talked about God and revenge, and I love that Rhea is so in tune spiritually, like with God, like she, she expressed to me that sometimes she had doubts, and I really respected that because she trusted me enough to say that, and I've had doubts, and uh, I believe in a higher power, I do, I believe in a higher power, I believe in positivity and things like that. But I feel like a lot of a lot of humanity is leaving behind the, the most basic human level of respect. You know, like I feel like people are leaving it behind, like it's gone. And even if you're not religious, I know people who are non-religious that treat people with respect. And I'm guilty for this too. You know that I've, you know, started to stray away from the golden rule. But I'm saying that this whole video is about me losing that and in the, not just with Rio but in terms of YouTube and just the things I was doing to grab attention so in the beginning of this video I told you you know when I started YouTube I didn't do this to grab attention right I didn't grab it I didn't do this I was getting zero views but what I'm telling with the story is that over time I start to become what I didn't even start with. You see what I mean? I started to slowly change. And there's nothing wrong with that, I guess, in a way. There's nothing wrong with getting views and stuff. It's just the way I was going about doing it, the way I was going about grabbing attention. You know, it was like I was hurting someone I cared about a lot. But first off, I want to apologize. I really do, Rhea. I really want to apologize. I like you. I really do care about you. Like, I really want us to work, like I want us to try again and stuff like that. And I don't want you to think that I would talk to other girls behind your back and stuff like that. I feel like we can really fix this. I really feel like we can move past all this crap because none of it is that serious in the first place. It just all, it just all was stupid things to do. It wasn't like it was relationship damaging. Also, you, you've you always had my back in terms of support. Like, you would support me even with, if, like, if I say I want to do this and I get mad and I want to, like, uh, the whole thing with some other YouTubers or some other people, like I was saying, oh, I want to make fun of these people or whatever, and then you were like, I'm not going to be with you if you're going to be like that. You know, you were like, you... You know, I'm trying to keep you on track. And I think that's good. She's trying to hold me down and things like that. Really just be there, you know. And I, that's one thing. I, I've always known that I was going to be the loser. Like, I've always been kind of like a loser. I mean, now it's, I don't take as many L's as I used to. But, like, when I was younger, you know, I was bullied horribly in middle school. I stood up to my bullies. I got my ass beat. And then I, <laughs> I tried to, um. I tried to do YouTube and then that didn't work out at first. Of course, things are different now, you know, I'm actually getting some views, some traction. But like, there was a lot of stuff that happened. Um, I asked a girl out to prom and on the intercom at my high school, it was it was towards the end of the year. And I, I was confident this girl was gonna say yes. I promise you, I was just confident. I wasn't cocky, but I was confident. I've never been cocky or anything in my life. I always went into stuff thinking I was somewhat wrong. But in this situation, I didn't think I was wrong. I really thought this girl liked me and maybe I had a chance to her prom and she basically rejected me and that sucked because I did it in front of the whole school. And that's why I hate high school and my life got better after high school because it was just like so embarrassing and then I ended up quitting the track team and it was a lot of shit behind it and I was just like I'm done you know I was just over with I was like I'm, I'm giving up I'm giving up and I just you know when I got out of high school I went to college for a few years I ended up not I ended up having to drop out because I got kicked out and some other shit that happened I ended up homeless I ended up living in my friend's basement shit like that and it was it was a lot of shit that happened in between now i ended up getting back in school and then i started doing the youtube stuff and i was like well i'm good at this and what i'm learning in school doesn't really help me 
so I dropped out. Now, that doesn't mean I didn't still educate myself. Of course, I educated myself on data and analytics and stuff. And I, you know, studied uh, like a few, like a little bit of different languages. I haven't really became fluent or really pushed myself. I, that's one goal I have this year is to really push myself into learning like different languages and stuff. Like at least one this year, like one, or at least start getting at it, find some time in my schedule. But yeah, I, I started, doing things that worked for me and it did it did start to work out the whole YouTube thing because it was crazy. Um, I was like, I was not, I didn't have any money. I didn't, <laughs> I told Rhea I didn't have any money. I'm broke. I'm, I was just not getting my life together. Like my credit was shit. My credit was like 500 or something like that. I, I did like what I was supposed to do, paid off some debts. Especially started paying on my student loans all the time and actually got my credit up and things like that. Like, it's a lot of shit that, you know, like when Rhea started talking to me, my shit wasn't really all together. And then, you know, talking to her, I really started to get my shit together. I was motivated because I felt like somebody really, you know, cared about me, you know, or whatever. And uh, it was, and, and that's the thing, you know, I'm not someone that's like a wimp or cry or whatever like that. I really don't. Um, because life does not, the grind was never glamorous. The grind is never glamorous for anybody. Grind is never glamorous. There's always something fucking wrong in life. That's it, period. You can have everything you want, but be miserable and want to fucking kill yourself, or you can be, you know, it's just, it's so much shit, it's a lot. And um, I think I found this place where I'm finally feel like I'm successful. And even though I'm not rich, but I'm not broke. And even though I'm kind of in the middle ground and I'm just working towards some of my love, like technology and stuff, I found this place where I feel successful. I don't feel like I need anything else. But at the same time, not needing anything else has not made me like desperate because I don't buy things or have things to fill a hole. I used to be like that, but now I'm not really like that because, you know, if, if I can have someone like real by my side or if I can just do what I like to do, which is making these videos, I can really just, you know, I don't have to feel a hole in me. I don't have to feel a hole. And I feel like that's another problem with a lot of YouTubers too. They feel like they have to fill a hole and they get rich and they buy all this shit and they don't feel happy. And you know, they like to put on the front like, oh, I got this, I got this, I got more money than you. And then they really don't feel good about it. They don't really feel good about life with themselves because they were chasing numbers. Me, at this point, I'm chasing purpose. Right now, to me, filming videos and put them online, things like that and doing like entertainment type stuff makes me feel purposeful. I'm not doing it for the sake of money or attention. I am literally doing it just to wake up to do it every day. It's not like it's like a, you know, like a, it's not even a goal or aspiration or end goal to it. I'm really just doing it. And I think that is um, also how you can respect somebody too. You know, if someone has something that is different from you, a passion, I think you should support it. That's a part of the golden rule. So, I don't know. Maybe this can kind of explain. I kind of threw some of my life in there. I kind of threw some parts of the golden rule in there. Kind of threw some things in there to let Rhea know what's really going on behind the scenes. You know, like, there's a lot more to this. It's deep. It's really deep. You know, it's not like it's just it's deep. It's it's life has so many different definitions and meanings to it. And, you know, my life could be different from the next guy. You know, the next guy could want to do this for the rest of his life or you know, everyone has their own different um, thing. But the golden rule is to respect everybody at the most basic human level. It doesn't matter if you don't like them, if you don't like what they do, if you don't like whatever they got going on, or whatever it is. Even if they do drugs, they're on the street, or they don't have no money to their name, I think you should just respect them 
just for the fact that they're human. They're human beings, they're living, and they have feelings just like you, and stuff like that. And I'm not saying the world's not all, not, you know, all kumbaya and everyone's happy and shit. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying, you know, and you don't have to be gullible to love everybody unconditionally, you know what I'm saying, or give everybody a chance. You know, you do, actually, you're being ignorant if you don't try to, you know, it's... It's easy for you to judge not knowing someone's story. You know, it's easy, it's so easy for you to judge and you don't know someone's story. So, like I said, the golden rule, most basic human level thing, do that, get it together. Because I'm trying to, I, I, I have problems doing it too, bro. I'm not gonna lie to myself, I have problems doing it. Sometimes I'm judgmental when I don't need to and I've been stopping myself. You know, if I feel like I got something bad to say, I just don't say that shit, you know what I'm saying? I keep it in my head and say, what's wrong with me in my head? Why am I saying this? This is disgusting, you know what I mean? So, um, it's it's just like, it's one of those things, stuff like that. And I did the same thing when I looked at what I was doing to Rhea and like when she called me out on it and I really realized what the fuck I was doing. I was looking in my head like, why the fuck did I do that? It was so fucking stupid. It was so stupid, but... <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know.